one video that's going to cover everything and I don't want anyone who hasn't like watched me before to see this and think she doesn't have many reasons because I would just be here all night but I think this might be a good kind of video to start with I needed some sort of starting point because a lot of you guys were like I need you to talk about more experiences you've been through and I never know where to start so I just put off the video there's a few videos of me talking about like my first experience of a Ouija board so I may repeat myself a little bit if you watch my videos religiously but if not then great that's the only time I'm going to say great by the way if you haven't already subscribe to my channel to be notified every time I make a brand new video I'm also on social media such as Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. I stream regularly on you now and I have my own shirts. Mm. First off, a spiritualist church. If any of you are keen on, you know, exploring the area, finding more out, finding stuff out about it, seeing people who are like-minded to you who believe in the afterlife or you just want to watch some demonstrations, people will do medium demonstrations at the spiritualist church for little to no money. So you can go there, turn up, It'll be a really nice vibe. Sometimes you sing and the songs that are at the spiritualist church are really nice and fun and uplifting. The one at my church is anyway. They're not like scary songs. <laughs> they're not like churchy songs or anything. They're just, well, my one, they sing like literally Robbie Williams. I went there for a little while. And probably my first dip into it was the spiritualist church. And I remember going there for the first time and being like really nervous and stuff. And then you get there and you realize it's actually really chill and everyone's really nice. My first few like experiences with connecting to the dead, I suppose, was through a medium at spiritualist church that, was local to me and there's loads of different occasions where this has happened and I can name a few experiences where it's blown my mind and I'm like I leave that that church thinking yep there is somewhere we're all going there when we die and I'm excited <laughs> a particular experience that strikes out quite um strong in my head was when um the <laughs> this was not actually that long ago but the woman on the stage platform whatever you want to call it she was describing a very small man and <laughs> A lot of my family were at the church as well, like my cousin and auntie and mum and sister and all that. So anytime a small man is mentioned at the spiritual church, we all got a giggle to ourselves because we kind of like prepare ourselves for it possibly being my granddad, who was a very tiny man. <laughs> and I remember the woman particularly struggling or trying to get in any more information and then she was bringing in like gardening and stuff which could be you know quite generic for an older person like hobbies and stuff but then she brought in I think she brought in like dogs in a greenhouse or something like that but it was stuff that we were all like thinking hmm, yeah okay maybe just leave it now we don't want to like take someone else's message in case it was someone else coming through from somebody else and then she starts whispering uh, well not whispering whistling out of random like we've been sat with her for about an hour she wasn't whistling before like she just sometimes I mean, a bit like when I do my cards, I forget what I said like two minutes before because you kind of just zone out and just like try and like you're a medium. So you're trying to channel in the stuff that you're being shown or heard and you're just trying to say it to the person. So you kind of don't really realize what you're doing half the time. You started whistling and then we all like start laughing. <clears throat> this is going to sound so weird to some of you, but that was his thing. Like he always, always whistled. Nine times out of ten he was whistling and it was always like a joke in our family. He would whistle everywhere and you'd know where my granddad was because you could hear him whistling. Um, it was not the fact he whistled, it was the fact he couldn't whistle. Well, he used to be able to whistle and then he had a stroke and then he couldn't whistle as well as he used to. He was fine after the stroke, by the way just the fact he couldn't whistle and he had a few problems. Anyway, that was just an ongoing joke of us and the way this woman whistled was more like a whistly blow, like a, like I can't explain it unless you know someone who used to do something. When you hear it again, it sends shivers down your spine, particularly if they're not alive anymore. So she did it and then we kind of laugh and then the next thing that happens is she all looks at us because we're laughing obviously and we're like sorry but we have to start taking this message because we're connecting to all the things and when you started doing that we were like hmm so she comes over and the messages she gave like i remember it's weird it's almost as though every time i kind of doubt the afterlife something comes up comes along like that even though i physically went to the church i wasn't expecting to get such a, a pinpoint message so um she was just saying stuff that was describing people in our family and there was a particular person in my family which was his uh, wife who was alive at the time, my nan, um, and he was like describing her and the relationship between her and people in my family because there was a few like things going on, I'm not going to go into it, get into any specifics, but this was very personal family stuff that just a casual person would know and it's not stuff you share, like if there's a few like fiery conversations going on in your family, you're not really going to tell your friends about that, it's, it, it was a very personal thing. But then she was bringing up names of people from the past that, that Derek was close with and names are such a precious thing to hold on to because they're the best form of evidence in my opinion, unless someone's going like, oh I'm getting a John, Max, Mark, Jacob, Luke, and then you're like, ah, oh, Luke, that's the one. That's not evidential proof. Ed evidential proof is one name and the name you give is the one that you're thinking of kind of thing. And Derek had only recently 
died so this was a very like soft spot in our heart still and what i find crazy in itself that is evidence because you know if all of those bits of information came through and he hadn't died yet and she hadn't said you know oh i'm getting a granddad figure to me which she did say and my granddad was still alive i would think she's absolutely crazy so that itself to me just sounds suspiciously accurate because that happens all the time like i've had a lot of family members die unfortunately in my life the crazy thing is is like the minute they die like when they're alive i never heard anyone say to me oh your um uncles come through or your your grandma's come through when they were still alive the minute they died i'm getting medium say it to me all the time if someone was to say that to me when i had two alive grandmas i would think she's a con you know like i would be like right she's seen my age and probably just assumed i don't have a, grand a grandma alive anymore and she's just done a stab in the dark but that's to me just a small piece of evidence but there's more stuff as we will go along in this video another time i went to the spiritualist church <laughs> it was quite funny i actually went with a friend this is when Okay, I just saw a huge shadow. Okay, that was weird. There was like a massive shadow that went along the wall. I think it was just someone outside. Even though I'm on the top floor, so that was a bit weird. Anyway, I actually went with Lorna this t one time at the spiritualist church. And um, I was in a bit of a rush. So Lorna was texting me like, right, it's nearly time. I'll, pick, I'll meet you and let's let's walk to the church. And <laughs> I'm always fashionably really late. It's one of my things. I'm never early. <sighs> I try. <laughs> anyway. I reach open the uh, cupboard to get some clothes to wear something for the church, open the door, all my clothes fall out and I'm like, oh my goodness. So I put it on, I put something on and literally this was back when I did not care about organisation. I still kind of don't but I don't think I would be this bad ever again. I just took all my clothes, shoved it in the cupboard, whacked the door closed and left. And obviously if next time I open that door, all of the clothes are going to come out again. But I didn't care, I had time, I needed to go to the church, I had no time. So I walked to the church with Lorna. The medium comes to me first, straight away, and he's like, you. I mean, he did say I was a creative type. Looking at me, you can kind of probably tell that, but he was like, you work with computers, digital. I remember him saying something like, you watch something for a living or you film something for a living. And I was like, okay, well, yeah. But then once again, I was, I'm not stupid. Like I understand that people can make some quite educated guesses by looking at someone. He started laughing and he was like, right, I just have to say whatever I hear because that's what they want me to tell you. And then the next minute I'm like, okay, right. He's going to tell me I'm going to die tomorrow. Like, please no. And then he was like, I'm seeing like, you're not the tidiest of person. And then everyone started laughing in the church and I was like, oh. Once again, a young creative type. They're probably not the most tidy people, so I just kind of took it for what it was, but I took his message. I am aware that there are mediums who ruin it for other mediums, so I am very like switched on when it comes to this stuff because I don't want to just take on board anyone, you know? Anyway, so he goes, <laughs> he goes, I'm visioning a, a cupboard that is so messy that you can't shut the door. Almost like I can just imagine you like trying to close the uh, trying to close the door but you can't because it's so messy. He was saying that as like a way to describe the cupboard, but that is literally what I was doing on the way up to the church. So I laughed and I was like, yeah, I can take that message. <laughs> I tend to get reoccurring messages at the church that I need to push my comfort zones out and like do more that petrifies me because as a cancer crab, I do totally the opposite to that. But that's like a reoccurring message I always get at the church. So every time I hear that, I'm like, yes. And I never hear any or ever, anyone else in the church get that message. It always comes to me. So it's little things like that as well that makes me think, mm, that could be something they're just stabbing in the dark about, but it never seems to come to anyone else. One of the biggest things my most coolest experiences was when I went to see a psychic. My sister wanted to see a psychic for quite a while. We weren't really sure about it because it's a lot of money and you need to make sure you pick someone who's actually good. Now, this woman in our area, we know she's pretty good because we've seen her do demonstrations at events and stuff. You can go to mind, body and spirit events in your area if you Google it. But this woman has quite a good reputation, so we booked her. We came to her house and it was a weird experience going to someone's house. It was definitely an interesting one. Now sitting down with her straight away, she was coming out with so much stuff, so many names. And um, this was back when I was with my ex-boyfriend who lived in Oxford. So thinking back to this now, this was about four years ago now. And I remember her saying to me like, oh, you, you go up, you go up the country, you go up, up north or you will need to go up north. And I was like, well, I go to Oxford quite a lot to see my boyfriend. So I was almost set on the fact that she meant that. Basically giving her the opportunity to jump on that and be like, yeah, that's exactly what I meant. But she was like, no, I don't mean Oxford, I mean further up. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about because I'd never been past like Manchester. And even if I had been to Man Manchester, it was only just to see the Coronation Street Street uh, Coronation Street set. So <laughs> I didn't know what she was talking about. And she was like, mm, I see it, I see it. And I was like, okay, well, here we are now. Maybe that could have been a coincidence. There was loads of other stuff she was saying like, 
she's bringing up family members and uncles and she she wasn't asking if i had like a granddad in spirit she was like your granddad's here your granddad sat here and like she was just saying it as a matter of fact and i was like blown away by it and then she brought my uncle through um and said his initials jj she <laughs> She was like, kind of like putting on his voice in a way, not really his voice, but she was saying like, where's Tommy, where's Tom, where's Tommy, Tommy, Tom, Tommy, where, where's my Tom, where's my Tommy? And she kept on saying that and my uncle was apparently saying that. Well, Tommy was his grandson and they were very close for the time, the small time they did have together. That kind of gave me shivers because I was like, interesting. And then like, to cut a long story short, my sister actually saw this woman like two years later on her own without me there and she brought through an uncle and said this same thing like where's tom where's tommy tom where's my tommy right if she just remembered that from before right and wanted just to say it again because she needed to say things that was going to convince us you wouldn't remember those specific things if you see the amount of people that she sees and i'm saying that because i have conversations with people <laughs> And I forget what I said the next week. Like I said, when I do when I do card readings, I don't remember what I said to the person last week. I get feedback from them like a week later usually, and I'm like, I can't even remember what I said to you, but I'm glad that it made sense. If she said that to everyone, then I'm sure her reviews wouldn't be as good as they were uh, on <laughs> online. But another really cool thing is she said to me, I'm seeing you in a polka dot black and white dress with like a collar, kind of like 60s style. Is that 60s style? Um, to like an event or something. And I was like, yes. I literally bought a dress recently to go to my boyfriend at the time's 21st birthday party. And she was like, I know I can see it. You're going to look lovely. It's going to be great. And I was like, cool. And then she kind of looked at me and was like, do you have any, like, anything that you want to ask about that? Or did you have any questions about your relationship? And the tone kind of just went a little bit more like, ooh. And I can be honest and I can be open with you guys now because, you know, those times are gone. There was rocky moments in that relationship and moments where I did question everything. Think about if that question was asked in another time and if she had asked me this now, I would be like, nah, nah, nah. So I asked her about it. I was like, well, uh, I'm not really sure whether this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing and I don't really feel 100% comfortable as um, this person's partner. And she was like, he, he's quite a controlling type, isn't he? Like he he um, doesn't give you the freedom you want. He doesn't let your, your colors shine. And, and she was like, it will work. It will work as a relationship, but both of you are gonna change very much. So what, what it is um, that you kind of desire for in life and you can make it work. If you love each other enough, you will adapt with them and develop with them. But if you don't, um, the other person's gonna see those changes, not like it, and they're gonna walk away. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> And she did bring up a, a few things that I don't really want to go into, but if she said this now to me now, I'd be like, no. I, in fact, I, I recently listened to a medium on Fiverr. I booked one on Fiverr just because I had some credit on there. I don't know, I was bored. And she gave me the worst reading I think I've ever had. She was saying that Adam was like controlling and all of this stuff that he really wasn't like he was a creative type and, and I'm more of the like logical type and all this. And I was like, I think this is what I'm saying. People can get it wrong. And I don't want those people who who don't have the gift to ruin it for the others who work time and time every day to, to help people and to prove to them that there is an afterlife. afterlife. Anyway, so the psychic also had said to my sister um, that she had somebody called, oh, what was his name? Mm -hmm. I can't remember his name, but there was a name that she brought up and my sister straight away was like, yes, I know every psychic and medium or spiritual church demonstration person always tells her this. Every time a medium comes to her, they always mention this boy who follows my sister around, usually in her car, because we reckon he actually died in a car crash. So he kind of like looks after my sister and protects her and for whatever reason is a little bit attached to her. And she brought up this name and she was like, yes, he's a young boy. He, he died in a car accident. He, he watches you in the car. That's the same thing another person at the church said to her when when they first said it to her she couldn't take the message but the person was like adamant and they were like no nope, he's there you don't know him you didn't know him maybe in school a little bit slightly but he's now around you all the time so people keep saying this to her different people at different places different psychics different mediums who don't know each other bring up this boy where where's that coming from no one's telling me about this boy it's always her and it's always the same name and they never say something like oh it's your past brother or it's your past friend they usually say something like oh he's more like a guy like he's not necessarily someone you knew 
crazy stuff. Another really cool, um, I mean Ouija board. I don't even know where to get started with a Ouija board. My first experience with a Ouija board was unreal. Using a Ouija board is one of the weirdest experiences of my life. It's, I remember that very first feeling because basically we had the Ouija board over at my um, nan's house who isn't here anymore. I miss her so much. But it was at her old house and we were sat around a table and we had this Ouija board out. Uh, well, we print out letters and put them in a circle. We don't actually buy the Ouija board because I don't really like the fact that it says like it's a game on it and stuff. I just think that's weird. But we all sit around this table. I'm there being the scribe because I'm like shitting myself at first. I wasn't very sure of it. We literally sat there for like 20 minutes and nothing's happening. There's a glass, everyone's fingers on it and nothing's moving. It's a little bit awkward because we all came over to do this and it's like, mm. and like I said, my family are quite spiritual. So I had like my cousin and auntie and my granddad didn't want to join in, but my nan did, my sisters and my mum and I don't think my dad wanted to join in either. Um, um, so we're just waiting around for ages and we're asking loads of questions, we're asking if anyone's there and 20 minutes later the glass starts moving. The minute I saw that move, my life kind of changed as dramatic as that sounds. It just felt as though I've seen it now because you could say, you know, one of my family members pushed it. Why would they wait 20 minutes to do it? You could say that they weren't, you know, consciously aware that they were pushing it, but they were pushing it. But these things were coming out as individual messages for each different person on the board who were asking things about their own personal life. So unless the, the, the one person who happens to be on the glass knew all of those answers to the questions, it wasn't possible and we all want to see evidence as much as the next person right and and why we would ruin that by like tricking the rest of the family about dead relatives in our family is a bit sick actually quite honestly but anyway um the first person who came through ever i think was my granddad harry who was my mum's dad and he has come through before at my mum's psychic circle that she used to belong to he was one of the first people who ever came through to my mum she wasn't actually on the board in her psychic circle when my granddad harry used to come through all the time the first time he ever did come through to my mum at the psychic circle. Psychic circle is basically where you develop on your like spiritual powers and whatever. Um, he came through and she was actually writing. She wasn't on the board. So she wasn't doing the thing like spelling out his name and she wasn't affecting the board. She wasn't the person saying like, I want to talk to my dad so much, therefore I'm going to make this glass move. She was writing it down. And the people on the table were like, oh, you know, a Harry's come through. And there was another woman who had um, a husband who had passed called Harry. So everyone was like, oh, it's your husband. And she was like, this doesn't feel like my husband. This isn't my husband. This is somebody else, somebody new. And then he spelled out his surname, not a normal surname. His surname was Turpin, Harry Turpin. Where would you get that name from? That's a very hard name to pick out from. For somebody who doesn't know the rest of the people in the circle very well, very personally at all. That's the whole point of a psychic circle. You don't really want to be close knit. You don't want people to know your details because otherwise things can get a bit like confusing. So none of those people knew Harry Turpin or knew that was my mum's dad. And everyone was like, who the heck is Harry Turpin? My mum was like, right, I'm gonna have to say something. That was my dad. And this is like her first ever message she got through. And he used to come through very often. It kind of was like he built confidence or something. Apparently he started off very slowly and kind of got faster and that's how I believe it works and how I've witnessed it work before. When someone first comes through for the first time through the board, the glass is very slow, almost like they don't really know how to do it, what to do it, or they're still learning how to build up energy. I don't know how it works. But then the more and more times come uh, people come through, they kind of just get faster and speedier. And also there's a weird thing that happens where the glass kind of like circles around the boards and uh, letters as if it's kind of looking for the right letter. It's really weird. You can kind of sense it like instead of just going like Sometimes it will do that but at the, at the beginning it's usually like it just kind of like looks around it's kind of cool but we also did a little experiments to ourselves where we all closed our eyes and only the person writing the stuff down the scribe at the corner of the room looks at what the letters are because we just don't want to be the ones affecting the board we don't want to be the ones ruining it as much as you guys don't want me to be telling you a story that is actually a load of rubbish because it was someone in my family having us on oh and then we i've also done the ouija board with my mum and dad and my sisters in my own house like just a small group of us and I had I spoke about this already in a video but I had someone come through with a really lo long 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 name and you've kind of got to be careful when that happens because it could be someone messing around or just being stupid or like a bad entity or that kind of thing so it was a long name and we were like sorry we can't take this name we don't know who you are who are you for and it spelled out Ellie and I was like, oh my goodness me. I get scared because I'm like, oh my God, what's it going to tell me? Am I okay? Like, yeah. And then it started shortening the name to D-O-F-F, -F, Doff. It was going Doff, Doff, Doff. We were like, who is Doff? And then it spelled out Seventh Spear. And we were like, what? And it spelled out Seventh Spear again. I think that's right. But then it, I looked up later on in life what that meant. 
and that is an actual thing apparently it's like basically a higher up plane where spiritual guides and angels are supposed to like live and and they they kind of that's that's where they rise to and they're very intelligent beings who are here to help and support us on earth and help us become better people but anyway this stuff wanted to come through and was just talking about like school and stuff and telling me to work hard and things you know none of us had that none of us had that knowledge about a sixth sphere like who would have brought that up or was it seventh sphere something like that so we were asking it things like does ellie know you and it was like no and it was like have you lived on this earth before and it was like yes and and then we were like have you lived on this earth recently no are you ellie's guide yes so we were getting the fact that it looked after me or something it was some kind of alien from another dimension i think it did actually spell out dimension as well at one point so none of us had any you know knowledge on this kind of thing and if if any of us wanted a message we weren't going to start making up an alien and also a name that was spelt the same time every time it kept spelling out this long ass name and none of us could even pronounce it and it wasn't like a different name every time it was just the same thing it was very sure about its name we've also been on ghost hunts we've been on a few ghost hunts before in different buildings around the country and sometimes you can actually get messages through um ghost hunts even though you're there there to get messages from people who used to live in the building people from many years ago sometimes you can be doing a Ouija board and <laughs> your granddad pops in or something like that so this is exactly what happened to us when we were at uh, Field Place is a famous place to uh, go on ghost hunts in the UK. We were at Field Place and we we're doing the Ouija board and a medium was stood with us and he's kind of there to help us on the Ouija board because you know they kind of know what to do and they can also help us and support us if we get any messages and we want to like find out some information. So anyway he's there he's like right we're going to move this board to the corner of the room because there's actually someone stood there and we're in the wrong area of the room let's move over to the corner of the room go join them and we can see what we can find so we all move over to there and um it starts spelling out instantly my granddad's name once again Derek the one we spoke about earlier on not Harry my mum's stepdad Derek and I think he spelled out a surname as well and the medium was like okay thank you does anyone know this name and we're like yeah <laughs> We know this name. So we all start laughing and he's saying like, he's spelling out things like oh, what he did for a living because he was a doctor, he worked in a surgery and we were basically just asking for evidence. And um, there was a really lovely point. I think I do actually have this on camera. If you just type in Ninkon Poop Ghost Hunt, my ghost hunt videos will come up and it will be in one of those. The point of this long ass story is that he's just started to come through all of a sudden like in different places soon after that message we got at the spiritualist church. It's almost like it opened him up to coming through and continuing to come through very easily when we want him around. My mum and my sister went to the same uh, building as this to go to a mind body spirit market event thing. They basically sell stuff there and you can go to talks, listen to people talk. So my mum and sister went there. I would have gone but obviously I live here now so I can't just pop down for things like that anymore. So anyway they told me that before they went my mum joked about the fact that well you know Derek can't come through today because we're not doing a Ouija board at Field Place. We're going there for an event anyway so they go there they go around the stalls and then they notice that there's a um room available there um for talks and stuff you can sit down and chat and people will be discussing their stories on like crystals or how they got into the afterlife or how they became a medium that kind of thing so my sister and her mum are sat there and they can't be here to say the story properly i might get some things wrong but they're sat there and they kind of just watch all the demonstration uh, all the uh, talks one after the other they're sat in the room and people are walking in and out after each talk finishes but my sister and my mum are kind of sat there for most of it but anyway this one woman comes in and she's uh sat at the front talking about how she got into mediumship and how she began her journey kind of thing the woman sat next to my mum had looked at my mum earlier on and said to her that she recognized her from somewhere and my mum was like sorry i don't recognize you from anywhere but the woman was like yes i definitely recognize you from somewhere anyway so the talk starts and the woman starts discussing her story and she's like so it all began with me kind of sensing things and seeing things feeling like i was a little bit crazy because spiritualism wasn't really spoken about as much maybe as it is now you would kind of just be deemed as like a crazy person who is seeing things and you know sensing stuff that doesn't exist therefore you have some mental issues she she told the audience that she had gone to um, her GP her GP to get some advice 
and she explained like her symptoms and, and what she was experiencing and she had she told the crowd including my mum and my sister um that this gp this guy had said that he was quite a spiritual person and he believes that her best uh decision to make right now is to go to your local church and ask for help like uh, talk to somebody discuss it with somebody speak out about it she kind of was like okay like a gp telling me that he's spiritual and thinks i should go to church that's not very common like that's not generally i don't believe maybe it was back in the day back in the day gps weren't as like they didn't treat people as so much of a conveyor belt system like they do now like kind of like you know bring you in give you a pills and out you go it was more like an advice kind of therapy a bit more session when you went and visit the gp back then but anyway she said that this gp changed her life and saved her life and she said something i might be getting some of this information wrong but kate correct me in the comments if i got some of this wrong but she said that she she will never forget him because he changed so much of her life and because she went to her local church which was a spiritualist church and they uh, explained to her what she was seeing and why she was seeing it and helped her develop on these skills and next minute she's a medium that's what she's doing for her career and and it's just a lovely story so the woman next to my mum who had said she recognized her for whatever reason we still don't know why she said that by the way she puts her hands up and she's like well tell us who the gp was then because a spiritualist GP wasn't something that most people heard have heard of. So everyone was like, yeah, we want to know who this man is. Like, he sounds great. And the woman was like, oh, he was um, Dr. Linley, which was my granddad's surname. And she said the location. He ran this surgery himself. And my mum nearly fell off her fluffing seat. Because, you know, this woman could be talking about anyone in any area, any doctor, in any generation. She didn't know what kind of period of time she was talking about. And my mum didn't even need to be sat in that seat hearing that story. And in the same room that that very same man had come through at the Ouija board on the other day. And that morning, my mum was saying, you know, Derek's not going to come through today because we're not doing a Ouija board. He still came through, mama. He still came through in a very different way than expected. But he came through and I feel like he, he sent that message in his own way. Now I've got goosebumps talking about this now. And my mum put my hand up and was like, is this Derek Lindley? And she said, yes, that was his name. And she said, "That's my that was my dad stepdad that was my dad and the woman goes i'm so glad you told me this like how is he me and my white uh, husband drive past his surgery all the time and we're always like well where his surgery was and we always wonder how he is and how he's doing and how his wife is and, and my mum like told the news and said unfortunately he passed away not so long ago but it, he would it would have made his day to know that you're sharing the story and you're speaking so highly of him and you believe that he changed your life and there's just mountains and mountains of stories like that that just keep on coming in my life and every time they do i'm like here we go again. I'm ready to be enlightened for the hundredth time. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I don't want this video to be like a, I will make you believe it's not. It's just my own little stories. But if you enjoyed this, let me know in the comment section below. And also like this video if you enjoyed it and you want to see me talk about more stuff like this. Like I said earlier, I'm on social media such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. I also stream live on you now regularly almost every single weekday. So become a fan on there. I also sell shirts on Spreadshirt. Link down there. Thank you everyone for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye.